Hey, I'm Mead. I'm going to do a critique video for a Reddit user. It's kind of what I like to do in my spare time sometimes, just help some people out. Um, if you're watching this, you know, grab out a sketchbook and something, you know, take some notes, uh, draw along. Um, whenever you put it into your hand, you're going to learn it better. So let's flip over and uh, get going. Um, and if this is something that interests you and you want to um, sort of have a guarantee of know getting the uh, getting some critique from me um, I do have a patreon and uh, if you sign up for that particular tier I will critique something every month for you um, so this is actually a really nice job um, if you look at the sort of if you look at the proportions um, it's pretty darn good. Like if we figure out where the top of the, the crown of the head is, the bottom of the chin, and the eyes, um, we're pretty good in that direction, right? So we're about, we're about half. Um, of course the proportions change the second you tilt the head, so it all kind of goes out the window. Um, typically the head is five eyes wide with one eye in between. You know, over here since we're in slight three quarter, it's going to extend out on either side. Um, so it's pretty good, right? The nose is in about the right place, the mouth is in, in about the right place, and ultimately, you know, everything feels like it should, so um, that's a really good sign. So, I mean, from here, um, it's about strengthening what's been done with this sort of uh, armature that you've created, and I think to do that, it's mostly to focus on planes and value, right? So the way this is set up, we have a very clear light source coming from the, uh, the top left. Um, or yeah, kind of the top left because you can see down here in this shadow that the shadow kind of breaks off around here, around the lip, right? So what we want to do is um, make sure we're getting a lot of those plane changes involved and go through and analyze this sort of thing. One of the things that um, that you want to do is sometimes you know sometimes you want to take like different approaches to it right just to analyze. So there's this sort of comic book way of approaching it where you can take a really chunky um, piece of material and this is like you would just do this with ink right after you do this kind of sketch you can do this with charcoal too um, you can block out you know whatever is in shadow and focus on this shadow edge right and make a very clear decision about what's in light and what's in shadow And this is basically what all comic book artists do. And then colorists, they come in, they select these, these flat black areas, and then um, use that to change the color of, of them uh, so that you can get that nice, like, flat, blocky, linear comic book effect, right? And as a painter or as a drawer, um, you know, you're less interested in the, in the, um, you know, stark black thing in the end, probably you're going to, you know, want to use color or whatever. But, um, this I think is a tool, at least in terms of learning, um, to help you analyze what you're doing and to help you make decisions. Because if you don't clearly know what's in light and what's in shadow, then you're just not making those decisions, and you're kind of being wishy-washy about it, right? And, you know, indecision doesn't really work in terms of drawing, especially realism. I mean, really anything, I guess, in terms of art. It's like you don't want to be indecisive about it, okay? Same thing goes with hair, right? 
there's no light on it, you know, you make it dark. Okay, so this is kind of an approach um, that you can use to help yourself, you know, make clear decisions about this sort of stuff. Might find shadows inside the hair over here too, right? Okay, and what that's kind of doing is that's um, this is in in like the sort of Japanese traditional thing. This would be called a, a noton study, right? Where we literally basically just do two values. And the cool thing is, when you zoom out, it kind of like gives this um, illusion that there's a lot of light going on. Right, and um, what we've done is we've stayed out of of the half tones and have made this kind of stark. Um, so that's that's a useful tool, and you can use that to begin. Um, and you know you don't have to necessarily stick to this. If you do this with charcoal, you can then go back and um, take your eraser and actually lift up some of this material. Right, so you could begin this way then erase into it to get, you know, reflected lights and, and so on. Um, and what you notice is that the shapes that you've picked out work, right? So this is kind of a shape analysis tool, okay? Um, now, what I like to do is on every drawing, come over to the side um, and with my charcoal or whatever medium that I'm using, give myself a few swatches, right? And five is good. You know, there's a typical five value system that loads of people use. Um, and what that breaks down into is you do a uh, very dark, a middle one, which I'm putting in now. Okay. Then you want like a lightish tone. Try to pick one fairly light, not that light. About there, maybe. And then, of course, you have, you know, your paper tone. Right? So, um, just to be sure that you actually see that, I'll put a little outline around it. Okay. So, once we have that, then we can go in and we can assign values, right? So obviously, um, you know, this right here is going to be the dark side, and this will be the light side, or maybe not, obviously. But just to point that out, this is the dark, this is the light. So um, what we want to do is, uh, right along this edge, you're going to find a shadow core, and on shadow on form shadows, right? you're typically going to have soft edges. Okay, so when you go in there you can start working in uh, around soft edges. And to do this uh, in, an in the analog realm, you know, obviously you're just going to turn your material to the to the side, right? Use the the flat of the charcoal. Okay, then for cast shadows, hard edges, right? And you're going to get away from the flat and create these cast shadows, right? So under the lip, you're going to get a cast shadow down here, right? So the other thing that I like to think about is just kind of, you know, if there's, if you're in shadow, like in this sort of traditional sense, you're going to use a, um, like a middle value, right? The other thing too is we can check ourselves on top of these shapes that we did, right? So we can put a middle value onto these noton shapes. This is a, the luxury of working digitally, right? And so what I'm doing now is the equivalent of what you would do with your eraser, right? You would just run in there with your eraser and lift out up until you get to the sort of middle tone, right? to 
just checking back in. And then we can switch to be sure that we preserve some edges here. Here we're getting a deep cast shadow, right? I probably want to go pretty dark down here, right? Because we're not going to get a lot of light in this region. I wonder if there's a little bounce or reflected light. We can lift that back up. Okay. So there. Probably soften that, right? Um, and then we're probably going to get some shadows over here. Probably going to get a little bit of shadow sort of under the eye over here. Um, though probably not that much because you can see we're getting a little bit of light over on the other eye up here on this this area. We want to preserve that, right? Because some people, their eyes kind of like um, have that, they kind of come out over here. Then, you know, we can pick up some, pick up some darker values for the eyebrows, right? Because it's hair and the hair is actually darker. You can also start to throw that in into the eye itself. Um, probably in the eyes, they're not going to be like bright white typically. Um, a lot of times they're um, in this like halftone realm. So I'm basically going around like picking semi darker things to work on. It's probably going to get a little bit of a shadow um, on the cleft of the lip. Alright. Just kind of work into the face a little bit. You can always check back with that noton that we set up. Work on some shapes. Probably going to get just a hint of the right nostril over here. Probably going to get a deeper cast shadow down here. And what we're looking for is kind of like block end stuff, right? We're not looking for perfection. So over here, there's going to be a plane change down there, probably. Um, Right. So there's gonna be like just there's gonna be something there along the nose. And we probably need a value shift right around here to indicate the outer edge of the nose. We can decide on what that shape is exactly by pushing it back and forth, right? The bottom of the nose needs to have like a clear plane, right? Because essentially what you're doing with the nose is you're kind of building it out, right? And obviously that shape got way uglier. You know, and I can go back to more of what was going on with the noton pretty easily, right? I can just take this and uh, take this tone and push it back down, right? I never want anybody to feel like stuck with um, with what they've got, right? You should always be free to make changes as you go along. Okay, and this particular shape needs to be one that's like satisfying to you ultimately, right? Because you're kind of like the person that needs to decide that. 
And I think basically what this piece needs is just some decisions, right? A um, little bit of boldness in terms of where stuff's going, right? You know, saying like bold lip, bold turn under the lip, right? Cast shadow. There's the chin, right? Transitioning. You know, we can soften that transition if we want, right? Okay. Probably going to get a little shadow here. We might want to like lift this value, right? This can be very subtle. I think one of the things that happens is, um, you know, uh, and I do this too, is like we tend to like work into the um, into the light side too much, and then that kind of wrecks everything. Um, if you work too much into the light side, then you kind of destroy all of the um, mystery of the drawing. I think most of the information, you know, winds up happening in the dark side. Okay, so here, what builds the sense of reflected light is the core shadow, right? And what's happening is that light is hitting the cheek here and then bouncing back, and it's lightening up what's going on on part of the nose, but not on this edge right here, right? Same thing right here. We're going to block in a core shadow here, right? Same thing along the forehead. And on the forehead, because it's kind of going up, it's probably going to be more of like whatever is ambient off the ceiling or in the sky, right? And this starts to look fairly ugly for a minute because we haven't um, integrated into the rest of what we're doing. Okay, but if we uh, but if we zoom out, we're kind of like, you know, getting an uglier nose, right? But um, what we're gaining is like forms for the rest of the um, the head. So, you know. Obviously, we can go and fix that, right? Just keep looking back at the original decisions and working our way towards that a little more. We can lose some of this shadow and some of this edge. And make sure that we're not like seeing too much of the side, uh, too much of that far side, right? What tends to happen a lot of times is. Uh, like we'll turn the nose forward while it needs to be turned to the side. So, you know, we can be a little, be kind of a watchdog about that. You know, and make sure that we're getting to see the side of the nose, right? And that we're making sure that the nose is, is tilting and turning, right, away from us. So then taking this tone and just being sure that we're hitting the broad areas. The hair is probably going to be significantly darker, right? Because it seems to be dark hair, maybe a middle brown or something like that.
again, just making making a decision about where the dark side is. And so this is kind of this is also a new approach compared to the other one. So this is kind of the middle out approach, right? So here we know that there's probably going to be a little bit of anatomy here, right? A little bit of uh, a shadow in here. Play around back and forth with that edge, and where that cast shadow is. Keep zooming in and out, right? Should we use soft edges when we need soft edges, round when we need round, or hard edges when we need hard edges? We can also play around with this edge and transition, right? And make sure that it kind of matches the cheek over here, right? Because this shape's really important, I think. Because the cheekbone's kind of high and goes back really far, right? Which is kind of what's interesting about this this sort of subject is that high cheekbone and this shape over here, right? Okay. And then we haven't done anything like down here, so we probably should touch that eye, right? And since this eye is in shadow, what we might do is we might knock down some of the contrast a little bit. And of course, pick it back up. But I wouldn't be afraid to lose the eye or most of it here, right? This is one of those things that, like, you you want to draw the whole eye, right? But um, you know, when it's in shadow like this, you don't necessarily need to. And you can play around with, like, this effect, right? So we're using, like, kind of a rigid value system. But you can bring in ideas from the noton, you know, and you can do stuff like this, right? And just, like, you know, lose most of the eye. And run that shadow all together. You know? you want to add mystery to it, like, that's kind of part of the way, right? It's just to, you know, lose a lot of that, that uh, material, right? You know, a very painterly approach would be to say, like, you know, well, I could take, I could take my, uh, you know, darker value and just say, like, well, you know, this is all kind of one big shadow shape. So I could do something like this. And totally lose that distinction, right, for the eye. And it can just be, like, totally gone, right? It's an option. I'm not saying it's, like, a great option, right? And if you need to, you can bring it back, right? You can, you know. Bring some of that contrast in. Okay. We can take our super dark value. And we can you know, add things back in, right? Like we can knock in the 
the shape of this eye again. I guess the theme of this is like the idea of just like playing back and forth until you get stuff that you like. Um, and, you know, consciously using like these value systems too, right? Um, personally, I like what, I, what you know, is happening with this sort of noton stuff. Um, you know, the other thing that you can do too is, is go from the noton and uh, then um, soften edges, right? Like you can start in here, right? And by just softening these edges sometimes, playing with this edge quality, you can then, you know, start your drawing or painting, right? And this mixture of hard and soft edges can get pretty interesting. You know, and if you need if you need to preserve the edge, you can actually like kill some of the no time that you did, and then come back and work that edge again. This process right here is like very much like working in charcoal. Put it down, erase, put it down, erase. You know, if I like, um, if I'm working digitally, I can always do things like duplicate a layer, you know, and then I can work directly back on that layer and like. You know, I can erase into that layer, then come back and blend. Okay, so I was gonna um, show you what you could do with with this sort of thing, right? Um, the other thing too is, you know, I can dab my light side and work it back the other direction like I'm working with an eraser That helps those things sort of visually turn, um, and then I, you know, I'd want to preserve like a soft e or a hard edge here, but then maybe I would want my soft edge back over here, right? And I can soften that by painting my light tone back in, right? And I can get some of the chunky shapes back, even with a soft edge doing stuff like that, right? So this is kind of cool. Um, the other thing too is that, you know, this effect of light, of getting light to bounce back, can also be brought back in directly with the eraser, right? So, you know, on that original thing, you have that cheek coming in right here. So we can bring this, like, bounce light effect back. This will be really too dramatic, right? It's too bright. So we can knock it back down, right? We can adjust. Because what's happening physically is that light is actually bouncing off other surfaces and back onto this area, right? And you c this is really fun to do with charcoal because you can just work it back and forth and play around with your edges and, you know, play with your shapes until you get some things that you like. And you can stay in this in this really dark realm if you want or not, right? So here I can take that over here and I can do it on small forms too and bounce light onto the nose. And if I preserve that shadow core, right, and make sure that it's still darker than the light side, I can kind of get away with it, right? And deepen it back down if I need to. So now that's bringing out those those forms again, 
right? And um, and what's interesting about doing it like this is you can do this in a very like um, systematic and conscious way. And what's cool about doing it in broad segments like this is you're thinking about these like forms as a whole, right? So I can think, well, like along the top of the, above the, the cheekbone as it goes back, I'm gonna get some bounce light off of whatever is above, right? So I can bring that in. But then right there in the center where the cheekbone's like turning and going back to the ear, right? That's still gonna be dark, so I'm not gonna get any bounce light there, right? Here, you're gonna get some streakies going back in these directions, and you'll get it like you'll get a highlight section. Um, in here, so you create some interesting, like highlight strand shapes here. And you'll probably have like a dark bit of the hair on the back here to kind of hold it together. Probably get some shadows in the front. So what you do is you kind of create these block and shadow areas and then you leave these little highlight areas for the hair to, to shine, right? And then you can also take, you know, make sure that you can kind of turn that back around again. I mean, obviously, like that's too light, right? Because it's getting absolute whites in there, and you can knock it back down so that you turn this hair around. This is kind of fun because it makes hair less of a struggle because um, everybody struggles with hair. And essentially you just go along the direction, but you create these like shadow cores that go back and forth. Now, you know, other things too are like, you could potentially sneak in some faint shadows there, there, you know, on the side of the nose there, get a plane there. Probably going to knock down most of that nostril. Definitely a little bit on the lip here to make it kind of turn there. Probably going to expand out the shadow here. I like to work um, small like this a lot, is it? I it allows me to keep the hole in mind a little bit better. It's like tendency is to like work in and you forget to like take account into how these details are affecting the whole image. Transition tones there, transition tones there. Probably going to get like a thin but deep shadow under the turtleneck. I assume that's a turtleneck. We can also pick up some of the transition there to send it around to the back where it disappears. And then we can you know, smooth out some transitions here. You know, be clear about where this eye is. And this eye is, you know, part of it's going to be in shadow, right? Under the eye, we're probably going to get some shadow. It's easy to make eyes too bright, I think.
I think for me, like I always have this tendency to take stuff too far and then want to bring it back, right? So here I'm gonna, yeah, just always be taking stuff too far and then trying to bring it back. I like that kind of diamond eye shape that I drifted onto on the other side. So now it's a matter of matching it, right? Just pushing until that shape kind of goes together well. do some transitionary tones, make sure we get, you know, the nose shadow into shadow. Alright, so I think some of this stuff is basically like, we're doing a certain amount of work just to like learn about the, f the figure, right? And once we kind of like learn about this particular figure, then we go in and we can make better decisions, right? So most of this paint over was kind of garbage, right? But I think that was because, you know, I was kind of like learning this, learning what needed to happen, right? I mean, it still may not turn out great, but I think this is the crazy thing about critique is that, you know, the concepts will still kind of come across, even if, you know, my ability to draw this or paint this in is garbage, right? See how that kind of got too much shadow tone on it? So what I can do is lift that tone. And um, if you're working in charcoal or pencil, you know, kneaded rubber is kind of your best friend for lifting tones, right? You just flatten it out and you press it down and it like lifts tones really nicely. Work on that lip. Work on the plane above the lip, right? differentiate that plane from here so that we get that cheekbone going and then a little bit of a turning edge around the edge of the cheekbone is going to help and then making sure that you know we work into the hair on this side right you can even expand it a little bit to give it a shadow Yeah, you know, there's that slight tone on this far side and that helps everything kind of like turn around in space. So that it brings that the nose and the stuff that needs to come forward forward. You know, the other thing that's potentially possible is like lifting some of the blacks um, in here. they can be like black sometimes can just be like too stark you know um, and then I can you know I've gotten with kind of a hard edge like graphic drawing style so I can go back and reintegrate that over here right can pull some slight tone transitions back in, right? And just play with the shapes, continuing back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until we get something that we're satisfied with and that we like. And that may not happen. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. It's all right. Um, 
No, and I, I, and I think the thing is, there's like nothing really wrong with this drawing, you know? Um, I think it's just a matter of taking it further, you know? And the way to take it further is just kind of be clear about, you know, planes and the decisions, right? So what we'd want to do is probably bump up the darkness of this plane. Make sure that this plane turns back. And that this plane's dark. So we get the cast shadow. And we can potentially even lighten up this bit under the nose here. Just a tad. So that it's not like really, really stark. Do the same thing there, right? One side of the lip can be dark, the other can be light. Because you're getting more reflected light over here, right? You know? So now it's just about like basically pushing this stuff around and uh, making decisions about what you want, right? So I mean, I think um, these are kind of like two modes of analysis that we did. Like find some of the shadow cores, right? And find like the, the stark shapes. And then this was kind of a mixture of the two, right? Where we found stark shapes and did analysis. And um, you know, I think when you're, when you're doing studies like this, this is kind of, the point is to learn, right? And it's not necessarily to, to come up with a great uh, the great piece and I think what you've learned off here is learn the proportions and then you've learned kind of um, What's missing right and I think the next exercise for you to do is to do this kind of like This noton approach and just like really chunk out the darks and decide what's dark, right? So, you know when you see a shadow, right? Don't be afraid to put a shadow in so um, to that end, I think what you do is you get your charcoal out, right, and you just go for it. So like here you put like dark sand right here, you know, you're seeing a shadow there, you're seeing a shadow there, just like go ahead and do it, right, all the way, just bam, down. See a shadow there, put it in, right, you see a shadow there, like dark. Ink works really well for this, but it can be done with any medium, you know? And taking that two-dimensional approach is really cool because it just, it forces you to decide, like, what's the shadow side and what's the light side, right? And forcing yourself into that decision, you're going to learn a lot. Even if the drawing doesn't come out great, you're going to learn. So um, that's where I would go with it next. Um, so that's the end of the end of the critique um, hope you enjoyed it um, you know follow the channel follow along um, ask me questions I'm always open for questions and uh, I appreciate the, uh, the time it took to watch all this stuff